Hi everybody, thank you for stopping by my channel. A square pillow isn't square, the place where you'll learn anything and everything you wanted to know about home deck sewing. Boy, have I had a lot of questions about my table. So today's video is going to be all about my custom built workroom table. All the things that it does for me, all the ways that it saves time. And then I'm going to show you what resource I use for the instructions on how to build it. And I'm also gonna show you exactly how I cover and mark my table. My table happens to be 58 inches wide, um, easily accommodates a 54 inch width of fabric. Make it as long as you possibly can. I've made tables 14 feet long, 12 feet long. Um, the longer the better when it comes to home deck. I mentioned the length and width of the table, but the height of the table, if you do a lot of sewing like I do, is really important. Once it's got its final layer on, not necessarily the height of the substructure, but once it's completely finished, I like the height of the table to come just below my hip bone. The reason is that I cut across along with the fabric and, I, and it's a big table, I tend to be leaning over it a lot. If the table height's in the right spot, I can brace my body, my hip against the table like this, and instead of using my lower back to support myself, the table takes all that weight for me. And it really reduces fatigue when I'm doing a lot of standing and cutting and pressing and so forth. What happens if the table is too high, so I'm gonna shrink myself and pretend the table's higher, it reduces my reach. Whereas if I'm up here, I can reach a lot farther. If the table is too low and I reach over, I end up using my lower back a lot to hold myself up. So right below your hip bone is just a great spot where you're just going to save yourself some wear and tear. The other nice thing about this table is it's built like the floor in your house. It's so strong that I can jump up on it, I can climb on it, I can sit on it, I can walk on it, I can stand on it, and it doesn't care at all. And where this comes in handy is another time-saving um, trick that helps me from having to walk around the table to finish my cut. If I start cutting across this fabric and I get to where I can only reach so far, I can literally get up on it and finish my cut and I don't have to stop and walk around the table. The great thing about this table, as I said, it's designed specifically um, and lined and gridded for use in home deck sewing. And the reason that it's gridded this way is I have lines every inch so that no matter what length I need to make my cuts, I simply go to that number and cut my fabric. The way that you do this is you start by putting your scissors on the cutting line and you just sort of p gently peel it away as you go so you can sort of see the line. And if you start to go off, you can make any little corrections. This works great. It saves tons of time to be able to just use these cutting lines and not have to stop and measure and square everything up. And the other great thing about it is because of these one inch marks on the side. This is gonna help me with all of my hemming. So let me show you what I mean. So let's turn this piece of fabric over. If I'm making an unlined curtain panel and I line this fabric up along one long edge, like so, And then I'll take my, usually I'll take a long ruler and I'll do this, but I have this bolt. So I'll grab it, I'll smooth my fabric out. The first thing I see is that this fabric isn't cut perfectly straight. I know that my first horizontal line here is completely at a, a right angle to my long lines. So the first thing I, I know I can do is square up my fabric using one of these cutting lines. Then the next thing that it's great for is if this is the bottom of my curtain, without having to measure anything. 
I can simply, if I want to do a double four inch hem on the bottom of my curtain, I simply roll this up to my eight inch mark. It's as easy as this. No rulers, no measuring, no nothing. There's my eight inch hem. I can open that up, fold to my fold. There is my perfectly square and even double four inch hem. And because of the marks on the side, the same goes true for my side hems. I can just pull this over to line up with one of my marks. I simply fold to my three. Fold to my fold. I can also use it for my top hems. Simply pull this down to the zero line. And if I need this curtain hemmed to, let's say, 46 inches, I simply fold to the 46 inch mark and press in place. You get the idea. So I can make a drapery, drapery panel like, like that on this table without having to touch a tape measure or ruler or T-square. Another great thing about this table is this work surface is pinnable. That means I can stick pins directly into it without doing any damage. Another way that I pin into the side of my table is I've actually pinned and dressed out top treatments such as swags like this. I can pin them right to the side of the work table and do my adjustments on them before I finish uh, mounting or sewing my project together. The table provides me with tons of extra storage, both on the shelf and below the table. And with the casters I put on the bottom, I can even move the table up against the wall or relocate it as needed. All right, uh, the way that I see this is that this table is sort of made up of in two parts. One is the wooden structure that supports the top and the other is the top itself. Here is a picture of the Rolly Company's catalog. Rolly Company is a fantastic uh, source for workroom supplies, and you'll find everything that you need to make the top, to cover the top of your table here, um, but you're also going to find a free tutorial on their website. I used this ins these instructions to build the table. Um, however, I did support my table a little bit more because of the way that I tend to stand on it and walk on it and crawl around on it. So I did a little bit of extra uh, frame support. But other than that, I did follow the directions uh, from this source on how to build the table itself. And of course, you can also purchase all of the supplies you need to uh, prepare and cover the top of your table from them. So what do you need to cover the top? You're going to have a piece of plywood that's the first layer of the top of your table. Then there is an underlayment layer that acts as an insulation and a pinning surface. Then you're going to have a table pad and then finally a canvas cover. Rolly sells a plain canvas that you can mark yourself the way that I do, but they also sell a pre-printed canvas. Um, you can consider how you sew and which one you think works best for you or what your budget is and you can decide if you want to um, buy the plain or the printed canvas. As I said, you can purchase all of these things from Rolly Company, but you don't have to. Let me show you what I use when I make my tables. Whether you build a full permanent table like I have or a stationary top, which you can also just build this top surface and store it under a bed or in your garage and just take it out when you need it, what you're going to need to start with for your surface is plywood. I like to use particle board. It's less expensive than um, sanded or finished plywood. 
and it's super, super strong. And this one is half inch thick. Quarter inch I found is a little bit too thin and anything bigger than half inch is really overkill if you have a good support. The next thing you're going to need is an insulating layer that goes over the plywood and it's what protects your surface from uh, moisture when you're steaming and pressing and it also is what makes your surface pinnable. The product that is sold by Rolly Company as their pinnable work table surface looks like this. These are both uh, pinnable options. This one is definitely a little more dense and over time you might think that it will hold up better because it's it's a little bit more dense than this surface but I have found that I can't as long as I don't walk on this thing with heels I found that wall insulation for home building works really well. This one I really like because not only does it come in bigger pieces but it's super easy to cut. It's very available at any local store um, and it's a lot cheaper. You may be a bit overwhelmed when you get to your local home improvement store because there's a lot of different kinds of insulation in this section. Um, so let's just let me give you a couple tips. The one you see here is obviously really, really thin. You're not gonna wanna go with something like that. This next one looks nice and thick but it's actually pretty soft and spongy and not very dense, so I wouldn't choose that one. The next one that you see here, I think is the one that I probably used on my current table, and you'll probably see this one when I take my cover off and show you later in the video. Um, and it has worked really well, but comparing everything that's here, it's also a bit softer and spongier, and the price sort of does reflect that, so this time, I think I'm going to go with a little bit of a better cover. Um, as you can see, this one is nice and thick, but it's also a little bit denser than the other one. And again, the price does reflect that. But because these come in big four by eight foot sheets, I really don't need to buy very much. And in the long run, I think this is going to be a good choice for me. You can see, I mean, it does respond a little bit differently to pins. This one's a little bit softer. And this one, it's a little bit denser. Totally your choice. I've always used something like this. What this does is it actually protects <laughs> the pinnable surface. Additional protection from a heat and, heat and steam on that surface. And it also just really protects your pinnable surface from wear and abrasion and gives you a nice firm but cushioned top to work on. Um, I've used all different kinds of battings and paddings in my work and I will say this is one place where I prefer to specifically purchase the work table padding from Rolly Company. It is super dense and it doesn't have um, any ability to really to really stretch much or come apart is just super densely made and it just does the job perfectly. The last thing you're gonna need to finish your table is this canvas surface. Rolly sells their work table canvas and it's 10 and a half ounce cotton canvas. Um, I normally would just buy that from them. It comes in different widths to accommodate your table. My table is 60 inches wide, so I buy the 72 inch wide canvas, so I have plenty of room to wrap it around the edges and secure it to the bottom or sides of my table. Um, but one time, this last table, I decided I was gonna try and save a little money, and I bought some very similar, in fact, it's like 11 or 12 ounce canvas that I got, uh, I just found online. This is the canvas that I currently have on my table. And this is the one that Rolly provides. This one, although it's slightly lighter or slightly, I, I guess slightly thinner in feel, it's a little bit thinner, but the grain, it's more tightly woven and it's a little bit smoother. And I found that this table being just a little bit rougher 
and a little bit wider grain. It has tend to stretch out in a couple of spots and it tends to hold dirt more. So this time around, I went ahead and ordered, um, I ordered the work table canvas from Roly. My cover is old. After about mm, anywhere from four to six years, I tend to put a new canvas cover on my tables stained. They can sometimes get a little bit misshapen or stretched out. They get dirty. Um, and so periodically, every few years, I will put a new cover on. So I'm going to sort of take this opportunity to kind of disassemble the, the top of my, uh, my table, show you what's underneath here, and show you how I apply and prepare the top surface of my table. All right, I have taken off my old dirty canvas cover and here is my table with my padding on top and my insulation layer on the bottom. As you can see, my table padding does not look the same as the one I'm showing you, and that is simply because the padding uh, at the time that I purchased from Rolly Company looked like this. It is their product, it's just that now it's white, where when I purchased mine, it was a natural color. You can also see that it's still in amazing condition after all these years. So even though it is a bit of an investment to do the tables this way, they will last you a very long time. And the only thing I have ever had to replace is the canvas. And underneath my padding, here are my pieces of underlayment or wall insulation in my case. Um, as you see, they come in big sheets and I simply uh, run a uh, razor blade or utility knife along a straight edge and quickly just snap it on that line and you put it together like a puzzle to get it to fit your table. Um, you can use spray adhesive but I just tend to put some screws into some wood screws in through it uh, to secure it to the table. When you get your table padding and your canvas fabric I recommend unrolling it all, laying it out flat for a few days, helping it relax um, so that it's nice and flat. The uh, padding layer is cut exactly to fit the top of your table um, and make sure your canvas is big enough where it overhangs uh, several inches on this side so you have room to attach it. The next thing you're going to want to do is square your fabric up on the grain. I did a little video on exactly how to square up fabric using this method. You can find it on my channel. Um, but you're going to basically pull a thread until you get a consistent line all the way across the width of the fabric and you're going to cut right along that line so you know that your fabric is squared to the weave. The next step is to draw a line along one long edge and one short edge. You're going to measure up from the edge of your fabric an equal distance that's going to be approximately where you want your fabric to overhang your table. Make sure you leave enough room for stapling this on. And this is going to be the lines that you use to line up your cover to your table edge. Because you squared up your fabric, you know that these lines are going to be nice and square. And so I'll just use a pencil and I will draw those lines. And we're going to start by attaching one long edge of the fabric to the table. Um, start out by just laying your lines at the corner, the intersection where your two lines meet. All right, grab a staple gun and uh, some staples. I like 3 8 inch. I, smaller ones um, I don't feel are strong enough, and longer ones are just sort of really hard to pull out if you want to make an adjustment. I'll start by stapling the cover down on the very end of one corner, and then I will stretch the fabric pretty tautly um, and I will staple it onto the far corner so that I have my two ends secured. And then I'll usually start about in the middle of the table. I will pull it down until my pencil line is lined up with my edge and I will put staples in along the edge uh, just dividing it as I go. For instance, I'll do one in the middle then I'll do one halfway between the end and the middle, and I'll just sort of work my way evenly along the table until one long edge is completely stapled down. And now I'll do the short end where I've drawn my line. You're going to pull nice and snug until the corner lines line up at one end. Do the same thing. Put a staple in on one end, pull nice and tight down the, down the length of the uh, short end, and put a staple in uh, on the other end and work your way down until your short end is stapled on. 
Next, I'm going to do my other short end. Pull a thread so you have a nice straight grain line, and then pull nice and snug at one corner and make a little mark at that corner. Whatever that measurement is, you're going to draw a line from your nice straight grain line that you just found up the distance to that mark. So for instance, in my case, that measurement was eight and a quarter inches. I'm going to carefully line up the edge of my ruler to my nice straight grain line, and I'm going to make marks all along that line at eight and a quarter inches up. I'm just going to connect those lines, and now I have a nice straight square line to staple my fabric onto the edge of the short end of the table. So again, you'll start at one corner, pull to the other corner, and then find your center and just staple your side on just like you did the other ones. Do the very same thing on the last end and finish your corners however you like to finish your corners. If you want to wrap the fabric around the bottom and finish it, whatever works for you as far as this point goes, that's totally up to you. Now your fabric is on, square, tight, and ready for marking. Okay, now comes the hardest part of the whole project, if you ask me. This takes some time and some patience, but in the end, if you have an unmarked canvas like I do, and you wanna mark the table to work for your type of sewing, taking the time to do this step is so worth it. It will save you hours and hours and hours of time in the long run. So it's worth taking a little time to put the lines on. And here's how I do it. I start on a long end. I'll take a two inch ruler, line it up perfectly along the straight long edge of my fabric and draw a line all the way down. The next thing I'll do is take a T-square and I'll make a right angle mark, as you see here, um, pretty close to the short end of the table. And I use the T-square at this point because even though I know I've squared up my fabric grain and I think my table is perfectly square and straight, this is just a little extra insurance to make sure my grid lines are perfectly square and straight. And now I'll measure over to do the other long end. I'll start at my mark. I'll measure all the way across the table, making sure that you leave enough space so that you can write your numbers in. You don't want to go right to the edge. Repeat that step in several places along the other long side. Connect your marks and now you have your other long line finished. Now using a long ruler or a tape measure, start at one end and mark exactly at one inch intervals all the way down the long end of the table until you pretty much run out of space. And do the same thing on the other long end of the table. Now before I start drawing on my permanent lines, the last thing I'm gonna do is you know where I first started by making a long line two inches from one long edge of the fabric? I'm going to make a mark one inch from that so that my very first line is going to be one inch from the long edge of the table, not two inches. So I'm going to draw a line one inch closer to the edge of the table. And now comes the very last part of this project, drawing the lines on. Uh, this can be a little bit tedious and time consuming, so please be patient. And it will work better if you have another pair of hands to help you hold your long ruler in place. Um, but what I normally use for this is a black Sharpie. Although it is permanent, and if you make a mistake, you can't take it off, it also does not wear off. I've never had to remark my lines before my canvas had to be replaced for other reasons. Um, so this is my, uh, my marker of choice. The really skinny, uh, small, fine tip Sharpies don't work as well as this one. This particular type of Sharpie has always worked really well for marking my lines on the table. And another tip before you start drawing is make sure that your ruler is spaced far enough away from your marks so that you've accounted for the thickness of the uh, tip of the Sharpie. Now simply start at one long end and carefully work your way all the way down the table until you can't reach anymore. Once you get to the point where you can't reach anymore, I will climb up on the table as you see right here, and draw my lines to about the halfway point. Then I will start at the other long end of the table, do the same thing, make lines until I can't reach anymore, and jump up on there and finish the job. I 
want you to know that I have never made one of these tables without making little mistakes here and there, without my ruler slipping, without my Sharpie slipping. Don't beat yourself up. If it's not exactly perfect, you're never even going to notice it once you start working. The last lines are optional lines. For me, I like doing eight inches worth of lines along my two long ends. I primarily use these for side hems, but if you're not gonna use them, you don't have to do this step at all. Yay, the very last step is numbering your table lines. I've made some pretty stupid mistakes doing table lines before, so tips on doing your numbering. First of all, always start with zero, not one. Tip number two, use a tape measure just to help you make sure you don't skip any numbers or lose track. Um, you don't want to mess up your numbering sequence. Tip number three, make sure that you start your zero line on the same end of the table on both sides. Tip number four, make sure when you're deciding how big to write your numbers that you've accounted for how long your table is. I've marked them before where I use these nice big numbers, and then when I got to 100 plus inches, they were practically touching each other. So make sure your numbers will all fit, no matter how long your table is, and that there's enough space between them where you can easily read the numbers. So there you have it, the video on my work table. If you like the way that I teach, if you like my videos and the content on my channel, please subscribe. Please share with your friends. Thanks so much for watching and supporting my channel. Have a great day and happy sewing.